All right, hi, welcome to part three. All right, in the last part, we talked about uh, all the Gen 1 games and which ones I played, either some to pretty damn much. And so for better or worse, I pretty much touched all the Gen 1 games except for Blue. So in this part, we're going to talk about my experiences with playing Gen 2. Now, there are three games of Gen 2. Uh, there is uh, Gold, Silver, and Crystal. And what Gen 2 games do I have the most experience with? Well, pretty much the only one I've ever played. <laughs> Crystal. I have never played either gold or silver. Because I personally think that, that if you want a definite Gen 2 experience, play Crystal. Because I would definitely recommend Crystal myself. Because a lot of interesting things happened with that with with this generation, outside of just Crystal itself. Uh, for one, the entire generation is uh, well, the game's in color instead of just black and white like Gen One was. Mainly because, well, you know, Game Boy Color. Uh, let's see here. What was another major thing about Gen Two? Um, outside of, other than a new region in the, you know, the main game, the main story, for post-game, you get to go back to Kanto and relive all your memories in Kanto, although it's definitely been scaled down. But, yeah, it was actually pretty cool to actually go back through Johto, or go back through Kanto, at the end of, you know, a Gen 2 game. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Now for the stuff that were introduced in Crystal specifically. Uh, for one, animated sprites. Yeah, it was the first time that's that any type of sprite other than the overworld were animated. Like the Pokemon were even animated. Well, only the Pokemon were animated in the battle. Prior, so for, you know, red, blue, green, yellow, and gold and silver, all the Pokemon sprites were just, they were just idle with their, uh, their cry. But with Crystal, they have some form of like little animation on top of their cry. Which I thought was pretty cool. Oh, there's also one thing I forgot to mention about Yellow. Is that they introduced the, the thing of Pokemon following you. Although it was only Pikachu that followed. That that main like feature that everyone loves. Well, it's important to note for a future game. So I'm just going to note that right there, right there. Because I should have mentioned it in the last part. Anyways, Gen 2. Oh, let's see here. What else was a crystal uh, improvement onto the series? Uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah. You actually get a choice to pick a female character now. Regardless, like every game before Crystal, if you if you were playing, regardless of if you were a boy or not, you had to play as the boy. And Crystal was like, nah, you're going to have the chance to actually be, are you a boy or are you a girl? Because that's, you know, the, one of the main things that they ask you in every Pokemon game. And where did that start? That started in Crystal. 
But yeah, I've played through Crystal so many times. Like when I was first starting to get into the game like itself, all I would really like, all I really, um, I, I pretty much knew how to do without, you know, needing a guide or anything, whether it be on YouTube or using Bulbapedia, was uh, I could get literally from the beginning of the game all the way to Goldenrod all by myself. Like, I can figure that out without any form of a guide. But right as soon as I get into Goldenrod and onward, that's when I need a guide. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, another thing I should mention about uh, Pokemon main staple Pokemon features uh, added in Gen 2. Quite a few. There's actually a few that I forgot about. Uh, uh, every single Pokemon has genders now. Which is interesting because the only Pokemon that had genders were the two Nidorans in Gen 1. And probably the more infamous major game change. Shinies. Shiny Pokemon were introduced in Gen 2. Although the, the, the palette coloring is not what you would actually like expect for, you know, for the Pokemon. Sometimes they're not what they would, they're, some of them are not what they look like now. But back then, they only had, like, a few, like, color palettes, so they had to, like, they kind of had to get a little creative with some of them, honestly. And one annoying mechanic introduced in Gen 2, roaming legendaries. Yeah, everyone hates it, but we still end up getting it. <laughs> Why, I don't know. Because you, you have to deal with the legendary dogs, or legendary beasts, legendary hamsters, or whatever you want to call them. Basically, they are Suicune, Entei, and Raikou. Those are your three roaming legendaries. Because it seems like every generation from Gen 2 and onward has to have some form of a roaming legendary. At least one. Which is annoying. But, yeah. Also, Crystal was also the first Pokemon game to where the legendaries have their own boss music. Which is pretty cool, because prior to Crystal, every single Pokemon, no matter if it's a legendary or not, it'll be just a regular random encounter ba uh, battle theme. So, yeah, I've played Crystal the most, and uh, in my current save file, I am currently like seven badges in, and I'm at the point where you can go up against Suicune, <laughs> like right before you actually like fight it. Uh, I'm probably trying to like get a shiny or something, but uh, yeah, I don't even have my full team of six yet, and I'm at seven badges. <laughs> when I get to, you know, Kanto, I'll hopefully have, like, 16 badges, since, you know, that's how many badges you can have in the maximum in a, po in a main series Pokemon game, apparently. Um, so, yeah. That's all I have to say about Gen 2. And uh, we'll be right back, and we're going to talk about Gen 3.